everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica, our continuing series, Tech Deep End, where we take a look at some complex or otherwise what I think might be unsolvable problems. And today we're going to be trying to put the Panasonic 3DO M2 FC35 BIOS into the arcade board. It was suggested to me, someone asked if it would work, and while I highly did not think it would, and spoiler alert, it did not, I always learn a lot by what doesn't work because it kind of helps me better understand how the hardware addresses the BIOS and how everything works in tandem. So sometimes even these failures tell me things. Plus, it's the middle of a pandemic and I have spare time, so why not try something weird like this? And the reason why it could technically work is that the arcade board is just an M2 with a custom JAMA board on the bottom. It has the two PowerPC 602s, it has the 3DO branded IO controller chip, and it's got the Bulldog GPU underneath. So as far as this board's concerned, it's almost identical to an FC21 or 35. When we get underneath to the Konami JAMA board, we have this custom BIOS and these video chips right here. All of the video and I.O. for arcade formats is being handled by Konami custom chips, so that's where the big difference lies. But we can burn the FC35 BIOS. We're using a 27C160ST burnable ROM, and when we put everything back together, it's going to be the arcade hardware with that console BIOS. And you do have this little chip adapter here. If you use the TTL Mini Pro, you can't write to these chips without this adapter because you have to be able to switch banks and there's not enough pins. I'll leave a link in the description below to where I purchased on eBay. It's not sponsored, it's cheap, and it's what I bought. But moving over to the actual computer itself, this chip has four banks of 512 kilobytes each. Now the dump that we're gonna be dealing with from the FC35 BIOS is one megabyte. So we can't just outright write the BIOS file to the chip because we have to deal with bank switching. You'll see here, the two arcade BIOS are two megabytes each and the console BIOS is one megabyte. So we're missing a megabyte's worth of information already, which is probably going to be one of our first hurdles is that clearly the arcade BIOS has more content in it that's controlling certain aspects of what's going on versus the console BIOS having half the information. And we will show later on in the video why that is. But because the file size is one megabyte, we have to split the ROM down into something that we're gonna be able to manage. What I recommend, it is a free application. It's called HJ Split, And that allows us to split files into whatever file size we need them to be. What I recommend before you do anything like that, I just make a copy of my file and I'll call it a working file because even though I have multiple copies of the FC35 BIOS, when I'm working on a project I want to know what my origin file is and what my working file is. We come in here, just click split and we're going to give it the input file which is going to be that FC35 BIOS and because we know we have 512 kilobyte banks, we're just going to go down here and we're going to type in 512 and we're going to select kilobyte. That allows this program to split that BIOS file dump out into segments that are able to be burnt on that chip with bank switching because otherwise you wouldn't have the space to be able to do it. It's a really useful program for burning chips and it's 100% free. Google it. I highly recommend it. It always works for me. And now taking a look at XG Pro, we have to select the following chip and I will put it up on the screen if you're using the adapter, but it's really easy to find. You just type in the chip that you need, and this is gonna let us burn to that 27C160 with the adapter. And we just need to turn off pin detect and check ID or else the program will throw up an error. And anytime you're burning a blank chip, you just wanna blank check it because sometimes the blank chips aren't blank. They do have a bit switched here and there and you need to erase them with a UV eraser. But now that we know that's blank, I'm gonna pull in the first segment of the BIOS for the FC35, and I'm just gonna come up here, device, and I'm gonna program it. I did do this in time-lapse. It probably takes like two to two and a half minutes to burn the chip. It's not too much, but I wasn't gonna show you the entire process. And then once that is done burning, the program's going to check all the data on the chip against the file you imported into XG Pro. And if you get confirmation as 100% data match, you know that you're good to go, at least on that burn, the data is a one-to-one -one copy. And now going back over to the adapter, if we just put this little dip switch on one down to the bottom, we're now writing onto the second bank of the chip. So we can select each bank. And again, all we do is just burn that second split file from HJ split onto the chip. And once all of it is done and confirmed, we're going to have a EPROM that has the FC35 BIOS on it that we're gonna be able to socket right into that JAMA board just to test some things out. Like I said, I don't think it's gonna work, I didn't expect it to work. But when you're looking at these chips, there's a notch on one and there's not on the other. So you wanna look for a circle on the chip. That tells us what 
direction the chip should be inserted in. And because this is an EP-ROM and UV light will erase it, this is a really lazy version of it, but I just took a piece of paper and put some scotch tape over it because I'm out of window stickers. But it works, especially because I'm gonna erase this very shortly. And you can socket that chip right into that JAMA board and you'll see that this little silk screen there even has a notch. So you know what direction you need to go on burnt chips with that notch. And all we need to do now is put the top board or the actual M2 of the M2 arcade board back on and just snap it into place and we're able to hook this up to our super gun and test it. And now moving into my office, I am going to turn the device on and you are going to see that absolutely nothing happens. This, as I very well expected, was a complete failure. But like I said earlier in the video, I learn a lot by things that don't work because by process of elimination, I kind of stuttered there, I can figure out what direction I may want to head in the future of trying to make this work. Because trying to get console games to run on arcade hardware is something that collectors want because the console hardware is so much rarer and more expensive. And inversely, getting the arcade games to run on the consoles will be great. And you can see here I put the old BIOS back in. No damage. You can't really break things doing this. It just didn't work until I switched the original BIOS back in. If we go back over to the computer and we take a look at the structure of the discs themselves, an Opera FS reader, this is IMSA Racing, and in the driver folders, you have all these different components that are basically telling the hardware what to do. The operating system and all the drivers are on each disc. If you go over here to this disc, which is going to be the World Soccer Championship, under drivers, all we have is the real-time clock security chip. None of the other information is on disc. So the arcade works different than the console does. The console has the operating system and all the drivers on the CDs, and that would have allowed the 3DO company and Panasonic to update it as they went. Where the arcade hardware, we're gonna see if we bring in the CD-ROM driver from IMSA Racing to a BIOS file from Total Vice, the most of the content is the same when we look at comparisons. So what Konami has done is taken all the drivers off of the disk and put them onto the BIOS. So when we put the BIOS from the FC35 into the arcade unit, it's missing most of the file structure, you know, those drivers to be able to actually control the hardware. And I would assume this is down to the fact that Konami wanted something that loaded quicker versus waiting for the OS to boot on the disk on startup for the arcade hardware. And if we take a look here at the FC35 to the arcade BIOS, the arcade BIOS has a lot more content, but if we scroll down, it does use a lot of chunks of the console BIOS, but Konami has basically added in all of those driver files as well as some custom things onto the ROM chip that they've branded themselves, so it functions in that way. But you can see, you know, we have this audio patch file. Things do match up, but that's why you can't just socket a console BIOS into an arcade M2. There's just content missing that was on the disc for the console releases versus on the arcade hardware. And that's it, it didn't work, no surprise. But now I know what I can focus on in the future. But thanks so much for watching. If you do us a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe. Definitely helps us out because it takes a lot of time to make these videos. If you have any thoughts on how to make this work, please let me know. Short of that, we'll come back to Tech Deep End when we have something else weird and wonderful to talk about. But we will be back on Sunday and Tuesday with episodes in our mainline series. But thanks so much for watching me basically just waste an afternoon because I had nothing better to do except try to swap BIOS files. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.